what's going on? Okay, um, so this uh, video is going to go over multiple different ways of how you could put together an image, different techniques, different things that you can use. It's not just putting together an image and a program and rendering it. It's about how we can take it a little bit further than that and um, learning different techniques of how we can put together an image, uh, kind of opening up your mind um, to start thinking in different ways and, and how to put together something like this. Okay, I hope you enjoy. And if there's any questions, just go ahead and chat. Very nice. Hey, everybody. Uh, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to put together a tutorial from beginning to end of how I work. Um, it's not going to be the greatest picture, but at least it's something that you can follow it. And there'll be multiple parts to this tutorial and you can just jump to the ones that you want to learn the most or you can sit through the whole thing uh, I always start off with this character for a guy so far he's one of the best that I have he's got a great skin material um, so I, I use him quite a lot actually um, from there once I got my character I always try and get the even if it's a brief pose usually what I do is I try and get a reference for what I'm gonna build I mean, a lot of the time I don't, I just uh, f uh, kind of mess around. I mean, this, this tool is quite cool. But basically, the reference that I got from this, I play a bit of Apex Legends, and uh, there's a really cool poster of uh, Seer, and he's kind of looking all cool to the crowd. So I thought I'd, I'd do a take on that and, and uh, do something cool. So basically here, yeah, you're just getting a basic pose art, uh, I always make like a polyplane because that's cool at least you could fit your feet perfectly onto the ground uh, and then I just shape shape it the way I want so usually I start off with like a pose that I can use and a basic pose to get something something close to what what I want it to be and then from there I can just change things around uh, obviously I sped up a lot of this I mean this was hours and hours of tutorial so I broke it down to like 40 minutes or something <laughs> even that's too long uh, so that's it I mean mess around move it the way you want to uh, try and get something powerful or cool or something that you enjoy after I've got the pose I usually dress the little dude um, and you know you've got a wardrobe so you can mix and match whatever you want which is cool uh, that's the, the couple of things that I I try and get a lot of this characters you can I, I get a couple but you can always make your own um, clothes and stuff are quite difficult to make so I, I got a nice collection of clothes poses are really nice to start off from uh, especially when they go on sale or something get get a set of poses or something uh, you get some bad ones but you get some really good ones um, so over here I just took the jacket from a pirate and you know I just see what's working what's not mess around a little bit um, <clears throat> I delete the things that I don't want to see and I run a simulation on the jacket because it's a day force all right all right all right um, from there I can kind of see what I, I, I want to do um, you know I do a quick render just to see what it's looking like now and again I just go into IRA and just see if I can use the materials or the textures if I have to retexture something myself but in this case we're going to keep it quite simple I'm going to use the textures that are already on there and let's see what happens so we're going to export to ZBrush now make sure export at current resolution is off or as it doesn't come back so you don't have to do this you can do everything inside of uh, what you might call it DAS but basically why I go into ZBrush is because of how easy it is I use three different brushes uh, for this part so basically what I do is I export it to fit the clothes properly because it does nothing ever fits properly you saw the jacket and stuff uh, so basically I want to get them out I don't want to set it you know do all the work in dads and stuff this is so easy uh, I can grab a couple of brushes uh, my move brush my cloth brush uh, and my move topology brush I use three brushes here that's it and as you can see I just there I've got the the cloth move and I just I'm just pulling out the thing here's a picture so I, I use the move to poly to poly 
the move and the cloth move. The cloth is great for cloth, obviously. Move is great for moving uh, lots of items at once. And the topology only selects that one mesh and moves that. So I just start dragging things around, see how it all works. Now and again, I hold down shift so I can just smooth a little bit. Um, if you hold down shift, you get the smooth brush and you can just smooth a little bit. So over here, I'm just moving cloth, uh, seeing how I want to try and see it or have a look at it. Now this step you can use when deformers inside of Daz, but oh lord, I, I mean, setting that up, running simulations and all that kind of stuff, or you can just bring it into something like Blender or Blender's free by the way, um, or ZBrush, and I love ZBrush, so that works really well for me. So you can see I'm just pushing things out, pulling things out. Uh, he's you know, it, it looks too thick there, and I'm not going to see that, you know, part of his torso, so I just push them in, and I can get a tighter fit of the clothes. <coughs> Excuse me. These kind of little things I can just push in, you're not going to see them. You know, if you're not going to see something like this, this part of the pants or whatever, I just push it, in, push it into the mesh, because you're not going to see it. All I want is the coat and the belt. And so basically I'm just using their cloth brush, moving it out, moving it out smoothing moving moving it out slightly it's just nudging things in the way that i uh, that i want to see them dead damn belt all right just slowly uh if you hold if you press s uh it'll give you the scale of the brush and then you can change the scale of the brush or you can right click and change it like that but just pressing s you can change the scale of your brush and z brush and then obviously if you press b you get your brush list and you can choose what brush you want. So there we go, slowly but surely. Just getting, there we go, tucking everything in so it looks a bit better. Making sure it all looks good. That's it. I mean, this part is just about having fun. Uh, you know, you don't do these images. Oh, this is a cool part. So, like, you. You're kind of just dragging with the cloth brush and you're dragging because cloth gathers especially if you've got a belt it gathers so just for a little bit of realism i start you know bringing out the cloth on the sides and stuff like that uh now this is a lot of fun it, it really is you know if you're doing art you're not doing it because you want to just quickly rush and get a picture out you're doing this for yourself uh you're doing this because you enjoy it and this is a zbrush is a really cool program uh, using multiple programs is great look after that you can hit the button go z so you select the item because it's multiple items you can see on the right hand side there the sub tool you pick the tool that you want by holding i think it's alt and you click on it or you can just select in the sub tool and you say go z it goes straight back into uh, daz and you can give it a name and then it gives you new morphs and there we go, you can just lift the most to 100 and it gives you what you've just done inside of ZBrush, which is awesome. It's such a nice workflow. Oh, I love it. Now, when you export it to ZBrush, you have to make sure that you're not using all your, uh, if you subdividing it, your resolution, your subdiv, you, you have to have it on, uh, you have to send through the base so you can't send through the the high res version of these things unless you don't want to bring it back. If you don't want to bring it back and you want to take the ZBrush into another program, go ahead. Uh, right, so once I've got that, I take the hair, I add hair to him. I use the wet hair here, which is an awesome hair. Um, but in this case, it didn't work for me. Uh, you'll see later. But in ZBrush, you know, go Z. Uh, push do what I want. I use the cloth move because it works wonders with a cloth move and move topological because that grabs strands. It doesn't grab all the meshes. It grabs one mesh at a time. And uh, So this is incredible. I mean, look how you can get incredible detail with this kind of thing. You can just see I'm just pulling moving hairs out and seeing what it looks like. And then I can send it back. Boom. Just 
name it ZBrush Hair 1 and Hair 2, whatever. Click on your hair inside of your scene. I type ZBrush and you can just push them up and bam, look how wicked that looks. Yeah, ZBrush is an extremely powerful foot for this kind of thing. I mean, Blender as well, you know, you can use whatever program of your choice. Uh, I just happen to use ZBrush a lot and I love it. Um, so I use it. Over here, I've just created a camera. Now I'm looking for like the, the, the shot. I want to frame my shot so I can start working around that. I can start lighting around my shot. Shot might change a little bit, but at least I get the general idea. So I kind of want it looking like that. I can turn my camera. I do like a, a you know, two two parts to it, so I can see the what the camera's looking like, and I can also, in the perspective mode, change the camera very easily to how I want. But once I've got the the position of the camera, I start refining little things. As I go, I just keep refining. This is all about the fingers and the hands. I want that kind of cool look that is opening his hands, like a powerful look. <laughs> And that's that's what I'm doing here. Yeah, yeah. One by one, you know. I'm not really working this fast. It's just I sped it up. <laughs> uh, cool. So once I've got the hands, uh, now I start putting down basic lighting. Now you've got environment options and tone mapper options. Uh, Basically what I do is I just click on my environment options and I go through a lot of different HDR or lighting scenarios that, that I've got inside of uh, DAZ already. It's good to get one or two good sets. You don't need a million different sets. You need one or two pretty good sets. This set I really like. It's pretty good. HDR photo shoot. You got a lot of different ones in there. And now what I do is I like to see what it's like without the lights. So, what it's automatically doing is, when you're testing this, it's creating a default light. Uh, and it, it, it brightens up everything. It uses the default light along with the dome. But basically what I like to do is, I just like to make a companion light and switch it off. And that gives you a proper, your proper lighting. So I like to work on the dome. Once I've got the dome, then I can start making different, uh, like the, the other lights. Once I've got the basic dome set up. Uh, of that lighting the, the look okay so here i'm just making uh one of them robots these figures are awesome robot soldier they they're fantastic man um this is the first time i'm using this character which i really like i'll be using this again you know just giving me a cool pose <clears throat> excuse me Mwah. um changing it around so basically i've got basic lighting now just just touching it up with the you know choose something but I'll, I'll always return back and test I test a lot of different scenarios out and that's what you should do take your time test a lot of different scenarios and inside of the uh, the environment environment options you can rotate the map the the HDRI so mess around with rotating the HDRI seeing if you can get it you know a better angle of it how you want it to light right so I'll start putting out the robot I uh, kind of lower him because I want him to act, uh, feel like he's on the stage. So I lower the robot a little bit and I just start duplicating. I select the entire robot into scene and I say uh, edit duplicate nodes and that creates another robot. Uh, over there what I was doing is I was selecting all the heads and you say point at Wolfgang. So inside of your parameters you can choose a head, uh, right click and say point at Wolfgang. So the head's automatically pointed with them. Now I've got my basic lighting. I've got my basic scene. I've got a little bit of depth of field going on there. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it's pretty cool. Now I've got my shot. So that's what I'm going to be seeing, which is cool. Because now I can fill that shot up. I don't have to worry about anything outside of that shot. I'm focusing on my scene. I've got two cameras there, one looking at my camera. And I start setting them out so it looks good in my shot. Remember, when you're building art, you're building for that shot. Okay, and this is a still. Once again, grabbing the heads, right click, aim at Wolfgang. This is a Wolfgang. This is a Wolfgang. Right, lighting. <clears throat> now I've got my basic light. 
I got my basic dudes. Uh, the belt's a little scruffy still. You know, you're always gonna you're always gonna carry on going back and tweaking and things like this. So, what I'm doing now is I start creating a light. I create a normal light. I turn it into a, uh, a rectangle. Um, you'll see there right now. There we go. I turn it into a rectangle, and uh, I start moving it around. Now, one thing how I usually light is I usually put the tone mapper down to uh, I mean up to 15 which makes my entire image a little bit darker because then I've got a nice dark kind of a look to it and I can and I can put the lights way brighter so I can get better better looks and feels to it so over here I can just make my height and width bigger now I can see the outside of the the rectangle because I got light portal on but if you had light portal on uh, it doesn't render the light. You have to switch it off in order for the light to work again. It's just, I don't know why they do that. It's weird. But it gives you a good representation of what the light is. Red. Um, okay, so basically I spend a lot of time in lighting. This is kind of why I turned to Unreal, because it's real-time lighting. You know, for this... You gotta do something and then wait. Okay, there's a reason I've got two open there. I've got a render view open and I've got a perspective view. The render view is rendering, obviously, and the perspective view is not. The reason I have two over is because if I'm moving lights around um, in a rendered view, it takes forever. But if you've got uh, another one that's uh, on the side, the perspective view, you can update the lights a lot quicker Okay, things will move a lot quicker. You're not going to wait 10, 10 years or 20, 30 years for the light to move. From there, all I do, once I've got a good light and I've put its, uh, uh, it's bright enough and stuff, I start duplicating it and I, and I copy the light. There's always an option. The third part is always copy the light, copy the, all the things that you've done to it. And then you can start moving that one out. Now remember the blue, that blue uh, pointer, XYZ, the blue one is face is the opposite of that is where the rectangle lights face. Okay, so not the arrow of the blue, the opposite towards the robots there. That's that's just an easy way of telling where your light shining when you when you're dealing with rectangle lights. It's the other side of the blue arrow. Okay, so from here I just start creating, rotating a little bit moving testing even if i get something looking good i'll test a few more scenarios just to see and if it's looking pretty good then i'll always i, I can always go back to the, the scenario that works the best once i get a good one i keep going until i find a better one if i don't find anything better i can always go back to the the older one so things are looking pretty cute um at this point I mean, I'm, I'm very happy. It's looking pretty nice. Very simple image. Uh, I mean, this is a very simple image that we're creating here, but it's just to run through a lot of the techniques that you can use. So once I've got uh, lighting starting to go, you know, I'm lighting the robots at this point, I'm not really concentrating too much on the, the actual character. And once again, duplicate the light, you know, change a little bit of the color, see if something works. Sometimes I'll change the character there like that. I change the, I change the color to something extreme just to see where it's shining. Sometimes it's hard to tell where the lighting is. So uh, I change it to something extreme so I can see where it's shining. Now you, you see like that uh, it's rendering the actual light, the rectangle light. That you can actually switch off inside of parameters at the very bottom it'll say render render uh, emitter and you can switch it off and then it won't render that uh, the actual rectangle light it'll it'll render the lighting still but just not the big rectangle in the sky now I start to concentrate on the actual character I'll bring the lights really close I lift the lumens so I can uh, see you know, I always go quite extreme because I can control it through the intensity a little bit higher up there. 
Uh, now remember, the smaller your width and height of these rectangle lights are, the more sharp and strong the light is. The bigger I make these lights, the more diffused and, and less bright it is, okay? So if you want something quite chilled and soft, make the lights big. If you want it really harsh and hard light, you, you keep the rectangle light small. So I'm just moving them around, seeing if I can highlight because I want to push him out. Uh, I want to make sure that he kind of pops out. So there we go over here, create the lights, you know, start getting a little bit of, uh, what are they called? See, you can see on the left hand side that where it's kind of shining. And we start to get some nice colors and nice, nice looks to it. That's it. I, I'm not too worried about that it's rendering the rectangles at this point because I just want to get the lighting. So I, I don't care uh, about the, the, the actual lights rendering. And that's it, I'll make as many lights as I want. There we go, I copy the last one and I've got the exact same duplicate and I can start moving it around, rotating it so it's pointing where I want and just start lighting the actual character, you know, highlighting the back of it, that thingy mobobby, whatever it is. You can start seeing like the highlights on his side now, his arm, there we go, start getting some cool. Over there, I switched Another, there we go. Render meta switched off. So that one, if it's right in the way of your geometry, you know, just switch it off. And then at least you don't have to worry about it rendering. Uh, same thing, I duplicate it. I've made them a lot smaller now because I want harsh light. And that gives me like some nice highlights there, you see, like room lights. So that's pretty cool. And then I move them around, do some stuff. Know what I mean? I have an echo while I'm recording this voice. So it's, it's always duplicated. And that's it. Have, have fun with this kind of stuff. Lighting is annoying because it takes ages to render and see things. Uh, that's why I'm absolutely loving Unreal. Real-time lighting. <laughs> it's awesome. But anyway, it's not too bad. If you got an okay rig, then it goes, it goes a lot faster. So here we go. Just lighting up rims some more rims get some more different rims rims more rims right back into uh, zbrush now that i've got my lighting i take it back into zbrush or wherever you want to take it just to do the final tweaks you know the belt was intersecting so i want to get this down properly and this is just kind of final polish stage get it in belt's looking good now nice and then I'll set up my render. Usually what I do is I put quality up to two, uh, min samples up a bit, max samples up a bit. Um, and there we go, render quality up to like two. And that's pretty much all I do really. It took about nine minutes to render, I think. Instead of Arnold's three days, I mean, my God, but anyway. Uh, so I do, I put these up a lot because once it's actually finished those samples, it just carries on. This is an extremely quick render. It's not the best render in the world and you can't render out layers, which I, I cannot believe a renderer doesn't support like different AOVs. Anyway, I rendered this. I didn't like the hair. The hair just looked odd, <clears throat> especially when you saw it that big. So what I did was I went to round two. I took the hair off. And I created a new one, back into ZBrush, back into posing. And that's what it is. If something doesn't feel right, it's not right. Go back, redo it, make sure that things are looking good, that you, you're happy with them. Uh, that's it. So I redid the hair using the cloth tool and the whatever. Once again, didn't look good, back into ZBrush try to do a few more things I just uh, look at that look at it I just couldn't look it back start it again uh, tried tried a couple of things no I didn't start again here I just continued going trying to you know something uh, terrible <laughs> it just never looked good in the renders 
Uh, I couldn't see his face and was hiding too much of his side. So I started all the way again, took a little bit slower, a little bit less happening, you know, just more chilled. And then took a couple of strands. I spent my time doing the last one. The other ones was too quick. You shouldn't be quick with anything. There we go. And then it started looking cool. Okay. So take your time when doing things and do it properly. If you rush something, it never gets done properly. It, it just, it never feels good. Okay. You're not doing this to rush an image. You're doing this because you're enjoying it. Um, and this was the last time I did it. There we go. There we go. I took my time slowly. Had some music in the background playing, you know what I mean? Had a little bit of coffee on the side and stuff. Chilled out, relaxed, you know. Uh, and went a lot slower. Used the right brushes, didn't rush things. Slight. You know, often it's, it's slight touches to something that makes something look good. It's the same as emotions. You know, emotions are so subtle. Uh, and, and people always push them to beyond belief because they want them to be seen it's not about that it's about kind of being felt it's you're not making it for the moment you're making it for that instant it's that instant second it's not the moment uh, probably doesn't make a lot of sense but when i do emotions it's never for the moment a moment's too long it's it's the instance it's that instance within a moment anyway got the hair Finally, look at that hair, man. Look at that hair. That hair look good. So, just changing the colors of the hair. Oh, I used that that hair. It's pretty damn cool. Draeger hair. Yeah. And for me, that, that was acceptable. So, rendered it out. 19 minutes, okay. 19 minutes to render out uh, that. Now, people say... A lot of the time, oh, I did this with no post. This always kind of makes me laugh because post is where the magic happens. No one's going to hire you if you try and do everything in one shot. They want the control to be able to change. Post is everything. It's where the magic happens. So what I do here, basically, in any other program, you can render out AOVs, but this you can't. So I hide, I hit all the robots, render the character, and then I hit the character and rendered out all the robots. So I get three images. I get the one with everything, one with the character, and one with the robots. Okay? Um, post is literally where the magic happens. You, you've got control over every element. There, I've got a layer for the character, a layer for the robots. I can mess with the character, mess with the robots, mess with the background, have an alpha. I can build a background. You can do anything you want. It, I highly recommend that you try and always render out your things in layers. Right, there's a, I left a bit of stuff there, so I, I just thought I'd clean it up in Photoshop. It's something nice for you guys to see. Uh, you know, just duplicating stuff, deleting things, uh, replacing the horn with a duplicated one that I just copied off uh, the one above there. You know, take a brush, just blend it in a bit, you know, with the eraser. Uh, and then that whole thing's in front of him like a belt buckle. I don't know what that was, but I didn't see it. So I just copy that shoulder, copy paste it onto the where it needs to go, and place it. Okay. Okay. Once you do that, you just gotta blend it in. Take the eraser, start uh, rubbing around it. Very nice. And now I'm pretty much seventy percent of the way there. See, boom, boom. Obviously, if it was important and nothing was hiding it, I would have taken a lot longer to make it perfect or re-render it, okay? But because we're not going to see it even, I'm just doing it really quick. It's, it's just kind of something to show you how you can quickly fix it. Now I'm using the clone tool. I select a little piece. This is just a brush with the, right, with the same colors. I keep on sampling the colors around there. Get rid of that. Uh, same thing here. Sample the yellow. Paint it in. Sample it, take it out, and slowly but surely you can just, you know, take away those artifacts. 
not the hardest thing to do, but it takes a little bit of time. Uh, and like I said, if, if this is going to be right up in the picture, close up, I would have either rendered it again or I would have taken a lot longer to get this looking right. This is just a slap on job because we, we're not even going to see this part. There we go. Pretty easy, pretty nice. Use clone brushes, uh, eraser brushes, and just normal brushes sampling the, the colors around there. There we go, sampling, doing whatever. And that's that part nearly done. Boom, 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 just polishing, cleaning it up, you know, blending a little bit. Photoshop's an incredible program. If you don't own Photoshop, you can get GIMP. GIMP is completely free, and honestly, it does a ton of what Photoshop does. All the main features that I use in Photoshop, GIMP, you, GIMP, GIMP, you can do the same thing. GIMP. Over here, literally just sampling things uh, using the clone brush, just getting it looking half decent. It doesn't have to look perfect. There we go, just putting that fade on the end there. You know, just kind of brushing it out a little bit so it fits in with the rest of it. There we go, boom, baby, perfect. Uh, you know, just sampling, just too much black there, and just filling it in. Not too much time or effort, but restore. Now, because I got the robots on their own layer, you can start doing things with elements that you create. Uh, look, I didn't create a perfect image here, but basically it was to show you what you can do. I dropped the character onto the image, and I took the, the main image so I could see exactly where to put the character that I rendered. There we go. I can just overlay it onto the main beauty. And now I've got the character, I've got the robots on two separate layers. That is awesome. Uh, I forgot to turn off the rectangle lights there, so they got rendered. Um, and also why I did the character is because I've got an alpha of the character. And you'll see how I use there. I used it right there where you can select the alpha of the character and take the character off the beauty pass if you want. So you can use all your layers as alphas as well. Right, put a quick background in there, black one. Now this, usually I build my backgrounds uh, in something like Unreal Engine or something and then I export the image, kind of match briefly the lighting and bring it in. But for this, I'm just gonna show you simply, you know, just taking an image of the internet or something and using it as a background. So here I'm just checking out the different ones because when you render the robots and the characters separately, the robots might block a lot of the light um, and then when you take the robots away and render the character, you might get a bit of a different result. And that's exactly what's happened here. So over here, I'm just, you know, I want him to be kind of dark and just his highlights lighting up, popping him up. Uh, it, I, I, I should have spent more time in the render translucency on the, on the jacket and the, you know, stuff like that. But, uh, you know, we can, we can go into different things like that. Over here, I'm just literally duplicating the, the robots, making them smaller, and start layering them in the background so I can start getting an army of them. Uh, this is like a filter to blur them, so you can start seeing I've got like camera blur on them now. So each layer I go back, I blur them a little more. I make them smaller, I can rotate them, start making like just different, different ways of doing things. And that is pretty key. Uh, so you can just carry on, you know. Uh, over here I'm just making a quick gradient for the background. Usually what I do is I, I put a lighter gradient behind the thing that I want to pop out, the subject that I want to pop out. So I put one in the background and then I put one in the front on top of everything. And you can get some really nice results here just using different overlay methods. Uh, the one I use here is I just wanted the hue. As you can see, like everything is different colors. And, and what this does when you put like a gradient or a color over everything is you can start blending everything kind of together. So it looks like part of the same picture. It kind of brings the colors into uh, all together and it just blends things in nicely. Um, you do have to comp it well. Okay, over here, I just literally took a couple of robots, put the clone tool, and just started cloning. I had a lot of robots on the same layer, so 
you know, as they go further back, they get a lot smaller, so you have to start filling them in. So I start duplicating a lot of layers, sticking them together, um, moving them around, you know, changing the, uh, what is it called, the blurriness of them and stuff. And just start layering them to make like a whole, <laughs> a lot of robots. Too many damn robots. The amount of robots is too damn high. Um, that's it, you know, rotating, bigger, smaller, kind of, you know, give it kind of a stylized look, really. Put everything at a bit of an angle. Over here, I just took a picture out of the internet, just to show you how to use something like this. Uh, at the end of this image, I didn't land up using it, because it was too noisy. So, you know, at this, I, I blurred it, I changed the hue saturation, I took away colors, you, you, compositing compositing is making sure everything fits like it's one image nothing sticks out uh, by the way the character you, you know is sometimes you see art on Daz especially on Daz where there's like a little black line around the characters because they render them without a background and then they put a background in something like this but they forget to pre-multiply it so it leaves a little black line around it if you go to I think it's edit pre-multiply and you defringe it something called defringe or pre-multiply black and you do it by one pixel it'll take away that black uh, outline of a character for you so here i'm just trying a million different things you know duplicating blurring motion blurring adding a couple of different layers one with motion blur so it gives it a more of a blurred look um, moving it around rotating it enlarging it I just couldn't really get something that looked amazing and then I put once I found like a nice direction I put one all the way on top of everything and I darkened it and this started giving me like cool rays like going over the damn robot all right damn robot uh, you know everything I do I always go into hue and I match over here I'm just taking every layer of the robots and I'm kind of blending them all in all in with the same colors kind of giving it a kind of a blue blue feel blue look ever so slightly don't go mental you know nothing needs to be all blue anyway i've got a whole layer of robots now put them in its own group and now i could put like uh effects on the actual group so i can i can change the entire robot uh layer as one that entire group all as one I just wanted to make it like a little bit darker. Uh, the thing is, I want him to pop out, not the robots. Like if we look around, we can see the robots there. But I, I want him to pop out. And that's why this background wasn't working for me. It's too much. It's too noisy. When an image becomes way too noisy, especially one like this where there's a, a million things in there. Okay, over here, I took his hair and duplicated it, put it over. And then I lift the brightness and contrast. And this gives me nice highlights in there. This is an easy way of creating highlights in the hair. This is also why it's nice to have alphas. And then I would blend it in. And then from there, I'll just composite it. Because it's too bright, I can bring down the opacity of it. Same thing with this part. Just make them a little bit higher. Duplicate it. Put it over. Screen it on or add it on or whatever. Uh, put the brightness, contrast up. And then just, you know blended in then I've got nice highlights in the hair boom and then over there I screen them and then I bring down the opacity because it's just way too much but I've got some nice highlights in the hair now and this is how you can control nice highlights in in in, in your composite compositions so as you can see I keep on switching on and off layers just to see what they look like if they look better worse and that's a nice way of just seeing how things are looking uh, background I was just carry on messing with it carrying on messing with it, seeing if I could use it I darkened him a lot so he pops out sometimes when you darken something in the foreground it pops him out nicely and I quite like that uh, the background I I wasn't enjoying it it's too much um, it's a little noisy it's a little loud and with the, an image like that oh man it's really loud as it is so you got to be careful of that. Keep things quite simple. Uh, you know, when something's too noisy, make sure a lot, of, a lot of it's 
not noisy. T take out the noise that you don't need. Over here, I'm using them Ron brushes. Uh, Ron's got some incredible brushes and I've been using them a lot actually lately. So over here, I just added like a couple of new layers. Uh, tested out a lot of like the different steams or dust that he's got. And when I found one that I liked, uh, a couple that I like, uh, I can move it around. Every time you do a dust layer, keep it on its own layer so you can adjust it. And then same thing, I comp it in using hue saturation, brightness, contrast, levels, uh, change the color so it fits in. Uh, everything's got a bit of a blue tone to it in this image. Um, and over here, same thing with him. I duplicate him. I brighten and contrast him so he's got like better highlights. I overlay it and then I delete the parts that I don't want. I just uh, use the eraser and I delete the parts that I don't want, keep the parts that I do want. That's another thing about having an alpha. You've got complete control over your characters. Right after that, I didn't like the background. I took it out. Um, and as you can see, it's giving me a way better picture. Now I'm using Ron's brushes again on another dust layer and just compositing like a bit of dust and, and uh, steam and whatever and just to give it like a little bit of uh, contrast and cool stuff happening uh, i put a vision bigger net vision net i don't know what it's called vision net vision net i've never known how to say that word and because i got the alpha i can delete the vision net off of him because i want him to pop out and then i just go over the vision net with a brush like an erasure brush and i just start brushing out the, the areas that i want to see better over there, brightness, contrast, hue saturation, you know, I'm just kind of messing with each layer now. I make a blue one of him, I duplicate it, make a blue one of him, and then I can overlay it onto the uh, the one before. So I've got two copies of him, and one's blue, the other one's normal, and then I can like overlay it or something onto the other one, and then start deleting what I like and don't like. I blurred is uh, dress a bit more. The one coming towards the camera i didn't like it too much i didn't put too much effort into there over here i duplicated the robots put a nice motion blur on it and then just composited it in you know deleted the parts that i didn't want you can see i'm switching on and off there it just gives it a bit of life something happening there deleted a bit more viganet visionet vinegaret vinegarette that's that's what i put on salad so here I'm just blurring the edges. Uh, it's just a little bit of, you know, polish. You blur the edges because, you know, they weren't perfect. So I'm just blurring those lines. And from here it's just, you know, literally brightness, contrast, hue saturations, uh, levels. It's just compositing the image. You can see I did the robots go lighter as they go back to give it some nice depth, give it a bit of epicness. Here I put like a, another gradient on um, and you know kind of overlaid it or whatever it was hue just to give it some color i used oranges to get just to give it some nice color which contrasts from the blue and then i put the opacity on like 50 or 30 just to give it like a hint and that's the final image anyway i really hope some of this helps if there's questions just give me a shout i know i went really fast over this but damn that's 40 45 minutes or whatever uh anyway feel free to pause feel free to go through it and i hope this helps and if there's any questions just shout if there's something that you want me to cover in more detail i will be doing a lot more tutorials but this was just kind of an overview how i work with things and how i get my images out anyway hope it helped and thanks for watching